a source of action that resides in the middle of a bag of skin. And so we have what I have called the conception of ourselves as a skin encapsulated ego. Now it's very funny how we use the word I. If we just refer to common speech, we are not accustomed to say, I am a body. We rather say, I have a body. We don't say, I beat my heart, in the same way as we say, I walk, I think, I talk. We feel that our heart beats itself, and that has nothing very much to do with I. In other words, we don't regard I myself as identical with our whole physical organ. We regard it as something inside. And most Western people locate their ego inside their head. You are somewhere between your eyes and between your ears and the rest of you dangles. So in other cultures, when a Chinese or Japanese person wants to locate the center of himself, he points here, not here, here to what Japanese call the koko, or the Chinese call shin, the heart, mind. Some people also locate themselves in the solar plexus. But by and large, we locate ourselves between, behind the eyes, and somewhere between the ears, as if within the dome of the skull there was some sort of arrangement such as there is at the SAC headquarters in Denver, where there are men in great rooms surrounded with radar screens and all sorts of things and earphones on, watching all the movements of planes all over the world. So in the same way, we have really the idea of ourselves as a little man inside our heads who has earphones on which bring messages from the ears and who has a television set in front of him which brings messages from the eyes and all sorts of uh, electrode things are all over his body giving him signals from the hands and so on and he has a panel in front of him with buttons and dials and things and so he more or less controls the body, but he isn't the same as the body because I am in charge of what are called the voluntary actions. And what are called involuntary actions of the body, they happen to me. I am pushed around by them, but to some extent also I 